with the extension. And I am Whitney Carter, and I am also a senior in Fallon Consumer Sciences Education. And I am also a clothing and, a clothing and textiles intern with Lindsay, Dr. Lindsay Shirley. So we will get started with the fashion show. Yeah! <laughs> OK, so we'd like to welcome everyone to the 2011 4-H Sewing and Fashion Contest fashion show. Garments that you see tonight were fully constructed by each of the participants wearing them. The contestants were judged on two things this year. The first being their interview where they showed the judges how well they understood the sewing techniques used in their garments as well as the knowledge of fiber and fabric care and their overall poise and confidence during their interview. The second area of judging focused on the construction and understanding of techniques used to create their projects. There was a lot of talent demonstrated this year, which made the judging extremely difficult. However, they, did, they all did such a fantastic job, and we are excited for you to see what they have spent hours creating. And they did wonderful, wonderful projects, and we are really excited about it. So, well, to start off the evening, we have contestant number one, and this is Christy Sorensen from Salt Lake County. We love This year, Christy chose to create a teal wool double-breasted pea coat. Christy is 15 years old and is a team leader in the Lucky 4-Hers. She chose to make this project in wool to gain the experience of sewing on a different type of fabric. She stated that she learned a lot of new techniques throughout the completion of this project, including bound buttonholes and princess seams. Christy will be in style this fall as she shows off her beautiful new coat. Thank you, Christy. So contestant number two is Nicole Peterson from Cash County. This year, Nicole chose to create a short sleeve turquoise top and tan colored pants that can also be converted into capris. This is her favorite part. Nicole attends Logan High where she plays on basketball and softball teams. Nicole loves pockets, which is why these pants have two sets. Nicole was excited to wear this outfit to school because it will be a fun change from sweats she wears during sports season. Look at those beautiful buttons. Good okay, everyone, we're going to start your engines. Okay. Tonight's proceedings will continue in the following fashion. This side and that side. Contestant side number three is Sarah Jo right Clark side. from Morgan like County. Hey, 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 ladies. Sarah is going to show us her quilt, which is on the far end. Um, so Sarah created a quilt made of adorable dog and cat prints. You'll have to go check that out after the show. She started sewing when she was eight years old. Her mother is a very crafty person who loves to sew and do other crafts. She passed that lob on to Sarah. Sarah stated that the inspiration for this quilt came when she was in the fabric store and saw these adorable fabrics with cats and dogs. Sarah loves cats and dogs and was so excited to create a piece that demonstrated that. She loves this quilt and is excited to use it while snuggled up with her own dog. Our next contestant is contestant number four, Holly Cox from Tooele County. This year, Holly created a brown and cream antique print with three fourths length sleeves. Holly is 16 and will be a junior at Grantsville High. She loves to read, ride her horses, and dance. When she found the fabric, she felt absolutely in love and had to make something out of it. She settled on a dress pattern that would drape across her body and have a fun flower accent. This dress is cut on the bias, which makes it great to wear, but a challenge to cut and sew. She plans to wear this dress to church and school, looking, looking good, Holly. <laughs> Contestant number five is Annalise Scoresby from Washington County. Annalise chose to make quite, quite the collection this year, comprised of a handbag, bag, and jumper, all made out of coordinating fabrics. She's excited to be modeling her newest Sanmer Ensemble. Making this dress allowed her to practice different sewing techniques, such as box pleat, side zipper, and tucks, which are adorable, as you can see. Annalise's favorite feature about the dress is the pocket, so she can keep a few of her favorite things close to her. 
The fun and spunky hat tops the outfit off with the exciting ruffle and flower accents. She cannot wait to wear this ensemble to church and when she goes out with friends. Have fun in the sun, Annalise. Contestant number six is Caitlin Mathis from Wasatch County. This year, Caitlin just decided to show off her amazing talents by creating this adorable nine block applique quilt, which she designed herself. Caitlin lives in Huber City. Through this quilt, she was able to learn how to machine applique using the blanket stitch. It has nine blocks, including an owl perched on a limb, a mushroom, a butterfly, and a fun tree full of flowers. The applique is surrounded by colorful coordinating fabrics. She likes this quilt because she feels like this reflects her personality. It sure does, Caitlin. I'm sure we'll all be buying her creative, creative pattern someday. <laughs> Contestant number seven is Hannah Black from Salt Lake County. This year, Hannah created a blue satin dress with a full skirt and gathered bodice. She chose this dress because she'll be able to wear it to dances. The dress pattern had a thin strap and jacket, but Hannah modified the pattern to create a sleeve that was more versatile. She especially likes the neckline and how the skirt twirls. Hannah learned with this project that she enjoys sewing much more when there are other people around working on their projects. Dance the night away, Hannah. Contestant number eight is Zachary Cooper from Tooele County. Here comes Zachary with a blast from the past, modeling apparel with designs appearing from the late 1800s. The project consisted of many different sewing techniques, such as putting in welt pockets and gussets, flat felt seams, and a large amount of whip stitching. He loves the outfit because it reminds him of one of his favorite characters, Sherlock Holmes. He plans, <laughs> he plans to wear this outfit to the midnight showing of the second Sherlock Holmes movie coming out this November. This project taught him the importance of being patient and how to use different types of fabric. Zachary Cooper, ladies and gentlemen, the next Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Contestant number nine is Bailey Drew from Salt Lake County. Bailey is 15 years old and just finished ninth grade. She is in her first year of 4-H. She has made a double-breasted, vivid, raspberry and chartreuse floral printed coat dress. This is a timeless classic design with a modern twist which spotlights Bailey's unique personal style. Made with 100% cotton twill, it has raglan cap sleeves, front and back pleats, and is completely lined. It features side pockets, belt carriers, and bright raspberry colored fabric buttons, which she covered herself. This is just the beginning of Bailey's 4 H experience. She's anticipating an exciting journey and hopes to make many friends along the way. How could she not with such an adorable dress? Contestant number 10 is Kristen Pryor from Utah County. Kristen will be a senior at Spanish Fork High School. She is active in tennis, dance, and choir. She has been in 4-H for nine years and has entered items in the 4-H and Make It With Wool contest. She designed the pockets and the belt for her coat, for her coat to make it her own design. The coat is fully lined, fully interlined, and fully interlaced. <laughs> interface. The lining is flashy gold and to give it a special touch. It sure does. Sure does. Show them that lining, Kristen. <laughs> Contestant number 11 is Savannah Hall from Tooele County. Savannah is from Tulilla, Utah and has been sewing for several years. For her camisole skirt, she chose a turquoise crepe back satin. For the outer top, she chose an aqua chiffon to complete this elegant look. Some of the alterations that she made include cutting down the camisole pattern and realigning the darts. The skirt has a sleek side zipper and a low back flounce, which were her new skills that she learned. You look great, Savannah.
Contestant number 12 is Shad Pryor from Utah County. <laughs> Shad chose to make a two-piece suit. Shad will be a sophomore at Spanish Fork High School. He enjoys tennis, riding his horses, and anything to do with the outdoors. Not in this suit, Shad. <laughs> he is an officer in his FFA chapter. He has been in 4-H for eight years and has entered items in the 4-H and Make It With Wolf contest. He made this marvelous, marvelous suit to wear to church. His favorite part, and ours, is the lining. He feels it shows off his personality. Looking snazzy, Shad. <laughs> Contestant number 13 is Dallas Montella from Washington County. Dallas is modeling a prom dress of her own design. To bring elegance and edginess to the skirt, she hand sewn and machine stitched peacock feathers to a black cotton pencil skirt which she created. The violet satin dress is loose and flowing on the top to complement the tighter skirt on the bottom. The peacock skirt is removable for the purpose that when she sits down, the skirt will not get damaged. When Dallas grows up, she wants to go to Parsons, the new school for design, and become a well-known, modest fashion designer. We'll see you at Fashion Week, Dallas. Contestant number 14 is Maria Arave from Weber County. Mariah. Or Mariah, I'm so sorry. Mariah Arave from Weber County. Mariah is a senior in the Ogden Valley Hoofprints 4-H group. This is her third year of 4-H, but her first as a senior. For her project, she chose to make a long tunic style shirt. The shirt is perfect for chilly school days and can be worn in a variety of ways. She has picked some dark jeans to bring out her bring out the color of her shirt and is wearing a wide belt around her middle to accent the shirt's fit. Though a casual shirt, the pattern was somewhat complex and she learned how to sew a collar, cuffs, yoke, and plackets. Fantastic job, Mariah. Keep on sewing. Contestant number 15 is Emily Coral from Utah County. Emily sewed this darling dress out of two layers of polyester, polyester lycra knits. By adding a lining layer to her pattern and adjusting the length, she came up with a very feminine double. And she came up with a very feminine double rolled hem. She loves the whole look and the versatility of the dress as she can switch the shoes and jewelry to go from an elegant to a casual look. Emily loves sewing and modifying patterns to suit her style. She will look great at dances or church in this modest fun dress. Knock them dead, Emily. Contestant number 16 is Abigail Payne from Box Elder County. Abigail is going to be a senior at Bear River High School. Some of her favorite activities include writing for the Standard Examiner, shopping at secondhand bookstores, and singing classical opera. Today, Abby is modeling a two-piece suit made of 100% wool. The suit features a ruffle, covered buttons, and a fun, bright blue lining. Let's see that lining. Ooh. Abby enjoyed learning how to apply couture tailoring details such as covered buttonholes and an applied finish on the blind hem. She plans to wear her suit to college scholarship interviews and other formal occasions. Any college would be lucky to have you, Abby. <laughs> Contestant number 17 is Natalie Scoresby from Washington County. Natalie is feeling the magic of summer as she wears her newly created summer dress. Being from Sunny Dixie, this summer dress is a great fit. She selected the pattern because she loved the scallop hem and the unique flair it added to the dress. She picked those colors because the blues and greens bring out the color in her beautiful eyes. Natalie added the wrap and tie around the waist, which she loves. Natalie plans to wear this fun dress to church. This was her first dress and she learned so much from the experience. This dress screams summer fun. Great job, Natalie. Contestant number 18 is Megan Sump from Utah County. Megan has been sewing for about six years now. This is her third quilt. The cute sunbonnet suit pattern was intended to be made into dish towels, 
but she changed it and made it into a colorful bed quilt. This is made out of 100% cotton fabric and batting. Her favorite part about the quilt process was picking out the fabric. Megan enjoyed learning how to piece and do embroidery. This will be a darling addition to your bedroom, Megan. Contestant number 19 is Shelby Staples from Summit County. Shelby is going to be a junior at North Summit High School. She created this beautiful quilt as a 4 in a 4-H quilting club where they made two blocks every month. This quilt is unique because every square is different. Shelby even redesigned one of the squares herself. The hardest part of constructing the quilt was matching up the corners and selecting the right fabric so that all the quilt squares stood out. Shelby had to take her quilt apart a couple of times in order to get it just perfect. The quilt was hand quilted by her and her grandmother. She really likes the bright colors. Shelby learned that quilting is a lot of work and can be well worth the while, as you can see. Good job, Shelby. Contestant number 20 is Heather McBride from Box Elder County. Heather made a tartan skirt of green and red that has block pleats and a frayed edge in the front. The original skirt was made by her great-grandmother for her grandma who gave it to her mother. Three years ago, Heather was given a huge assorted mix of fabric by a woman who, had just, who just recently passed away. When she found the original skirt in her mother's closet, she decided to make one slightly bigger to fit her. Rather unfortunately, she lost weight, causing the original to fit and the new one to be too big. The skirt is a Jackie Kennedy style, chic and feminine, but bold with its strong lines. Good job, Heather. So the next part of the fashion show is going to be the consumer strategies portion. These girls, they bought, they had to go out and find three different outfits. And out of those three different outfits, outfits, Shelby Adams is a sophomore at Juab High School. She is prepared for any interview that may come her way in this simple yet sophisticated double-breasted suit. It is embellished with a set of pearls and two-inch heels. Looking pretty snazzy, Shelby. Amanda Camp is a senior at Millard High School. This is contestant number two. Amanda loves to play soccer, basketball, and track. She bought this outfit to go to national conference. Looking great, Amanda. <laughs> Our third contestant is Hannah Black. Hannah, Hannah's back. And Hannah, She's not wearing her outfit right now because she was in both, but she's a sophomore at Harriman High and she loves hanging out with her friends where she can wear her dressy yet casual outfit, which I'm sure you see as she will be walking around later. <laughs> right, Hannah? Good job, Hannah. Contestant number four is Amanda Jones. Amanda has never worn five inch heels in her life. Now she sleeps in them. Whoa. When she is not wearing five inch hot pink shoes, she can wear her outfit with her orchestra playing her violin. We'd love to hear you play, Amanda. Our next contestant is Amy Ovard. Amy Ovard is from Hennifer, Hennifer, Utah. She attends North Summit High School. She is modeling a back-to-school outfit that she purchased for the Fashion Consumer Strategies Contest. It's going to look great on the first day of school, Amy. Love the shoes. Heather McBride is our next contestant. Heather McBride from a min municipal town called Collinston, Utah. Heather attends Bear River High. She has a great and abiding love for of hats. 
Her collection ranges from vintage 1950s to high fashion and functionality is a must. We love your hat. Our next contestant is Daisha Farrer. Hope I'm saying that right, Daisha. Fair. There we go. She just graduated from Duchesne High School and is attending Southern Utah University in the fall. Go Thunderbirds. This is what she is planning on wearing on her first day of college. I'm sure they will welcome you warmly, Daisha. Our next contestant is Chloe Cranendock. Chloe is from Salt Lake County and will be a junior at West High School. She spends her free time reading or shopping with her sisters. This will look good at high school, Chloe. Our next contestant is Susanna Coates. Susanna is from Millard High School. She is modeling this outfit she will be wearing on the first day of her senior year. I hope it goes well, Susanna. I'm sure it will. <laughs> Our next contestant is Marissa Barton. Marissa likes to express her personality through her clothes. She is from Box Elder County. She spends her time dancing and being random. We can definitely see your personality in this outfit, Marissa. So that concludes our fashion show for both the fashion strategies and the fashion competition. And so we would like to bring on um, Lynn, Dr. Lindsay Shirley and she will be presenting the awards for both of these contests. So let's bring her on. And the contestants can leave the stage, and as you're announced, you can come back on. Let's give all of these participants another round of applause. Thank you. As you can see, clothing and textiles extension is alive and well. We have had a record number of participants this year, an increase in participants this year, and it's really exciting to see how students are taking their innovation, their creative ideas, and applying it to create something that they obviously feel very confident in and comfortable in. So uh, I thank you for your applause and encouraging them in this process. This year, not only do we have the fashion and sewing contest and the consumer strategies contest for students to participate in, but we also have the opportunity for students to um, complete a track, an education track uh, called You Be the Designer. And behind me, you can see a flyer that uh, kind of sums up what we do during this three hour time period. This year, we had the opportunity to um, create a bag, a drawstring bag, and um, they were given the pattern and completed it and got to um, interject their design taste by choosing their fabric for the experience. Then we did a little recycle redesign and if you wa when you walked in you noticed there were some dress forms, half scale dress forms, rather petite models, um, over by the door. Those outfits are created out of found materials that you could just find in your house. Uh, one of them has some feathers so maybe a little hunting was involved. But um, the students were given the opportunity to express their, their creativity and apply the elements and principles of design to create clothing. And we do a full-size version of this on campus, so they're definitely uh, ready for the full-scale version next year. Then the third opportunity was tie-dyeing, applying color and creating t-shirts, and I'm sure you'll see some of those around your county uh, later on when you get home. But without further ado, let's go ahead and give all of these fantastic awards. And the first awards that we're going to, uh, the first students that we're going to recognize are the Fashion Consumer uh, Strategy students and the Blue Ribbon winners. The first individual that I would like to call to the stage is Daisha Frar. <laughs> Congratulations. Marissa Barton. A 
Amanda Camp. Heather McBride. Shelby Adams. Susanna Coates. Amanda Ovard. Chloe Cranendunk. And Amanda Jones. Congratulations, Blue Ribbon winners. The winner of the Fashion Consumer Strategies event will receive a certificate and a choice of a state contest jacket, $50 towards national competition in Denver, or $50 towards a future county state event. And the winner is Daisha Farrar. You can exit off that way. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you, Fashion Consumer Strategies. Now I would like to invite the Sewing and Fashion Blue Ribbon. Kristen Pryor. Annalee Scoresby. <laughs> Bailey Drew. Sarah Jo Clark. Christy Sorensen. Nicole Peterson. Holly Cox, Caitlin Mathis, Zachary Cooper, Shad Pryor, Mariah Arve. Emily Coral, <laughs> Abigail Payne, <laughs> and Shelby Staples. Congratulations. <laughs> and the, um, we're going to go ahead. We have three um, different places but multiple winners. So um, we're gonna go ahead and start with the first donation from Jill and, uh, and Dan Varga, uh, Ginger Shears. There are four sets of shears, so thank you very much for your donation. And the winners of the shears are Emily Coral, <laughs> Abigail Payne, Shad Pryor, and Bailey Drew, congratulations. On behalf of Clothing and Textiles Extension, um, a Rowenta iron is given to the sec second place winner, and that award goes to Shelby Staples. And if Tammy Adams would join me on the stage from Nettles Bernita, she will announce the winner. And the first place winner of the serger is Zachary Cooper. <laughs> 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 
Zachary will also have the opportunity to re represent Utah uh, in Denver at the 4-H Roundup. Congratulations. And that concludes our awards for clothing and textiles. Thank you.